This is like pin the tail on your favorite impeachment theory because they don't have evidence for any one single thing to impeach the president for. I yield back. Watching the impeachment debate is like watching a psych ward doctor argue with the institutionalized. I took uh, theater and drama when I was in college, uh, no way, just one course. To and I was told the first thing you have to do is have the willing suspension of disbelief. Let me remind you of a statement uh, that Dr. Fiona Hill made in her opening statement and her extraordinary, powerful opening statement, incredible testimony uh, before this Congress. She said, and I quote, if the president or anyone else impedes or subverts the national security of the United States in order to further a domestic, political, or personal interest, that is more than worthy of your attention. The debate to formally introduce two articles of impeachment was every bit the clown show any average American came to expect after three years of burnout resulting from the Democrats' desperation to manufacture anything they could to oust the anti-globalist rhetoric of populist favorite President Trump. Piling on more hubris and hypocrisy. We are blessed to live in a wonderful free country an important thing that keeps us free is the Constitution of the United States and the generations of Americans who've defended that Constitution on the battlefield, in the courts, in the Congress. The founders included the impeachment clause in the Constitution purposefully, and they gave Congress the sole authority to impeach for a reason. Alexander Hamilton said the greatest danger of impeachment would be depriving a president of due process. The greatest danger, Hamilton said, would be if impeachment was used politically by a party that had the most votes in the House, instead of being used on the basis of guilt or innocence for specified crimes under the Constitution. And today, the Committee of Jurisdiction, after only one week, is marking up a bill to impeach a president for crimes that aren't specified under the Constitution by the party that has the most votes in the House and pledged to impeach him from the first day of his presidency. Today's Democrats are the founders' worst nightmare come true. The Democrats pushed the big lie that they sat on the sidelines of history, doing the will of the founders, unaware that every soundbite will be used against them in the very near future, as they revert back to their natural hatred of our founding principles and its creators. The Constitution is a plain language set of laws that Americans for generations have adhered to and been protected by. It is a list of crimes the framers for feared and are forbidden actions not to be taken by our governors. I don't care if it's a George Washington statue or a Thomas Jefferson statue or a Robert E. Lee statue. They all need to come down. Meanwhile, the Republicans laid out the Democrats' crippling damage to our system for all with eyes to see and ears to hear. July 31st, 2016, the FBI opened the Trump-Russia investigation and spied on four American citizens associated with President Trump's campaign. They took the dossier to the FISA court and they lied to the court 17 times. Democrats have been resisting and looking for an excuse to impeach this president since the day he was elected. There were false charges that pro-Trump Russians had shut down the power grids in Vermont. A frivolous lawsuit was filed claiming voters, voting machines were rigged in three states. More than 50 House Democrats boycotted President Trump's swearing-in ceremony, including the chairman of this committee. The Washington Post ran an article titled, The Campaign to Impeach President, President Trump Has Begun on January 17, 2017. Strangely enough, the article was posted at 12.19 p.m. while the inaugural ceremonies were still happening. But the most notorious example of corruption was Burisma, who just happened to have on its board of directors Hunter Biden. And they say, you know what, that's not proper to investigate that type of conduct because his father's a politician. That's what that's about. That's the corruption. That's the abuse of power that's going on. Last Wednesday, this committee, the committee actually charged with handling impeachment, held the first of two hearings in which we heard from exactly zero fact witnesses. On Saturday, the Democrats on this committee announced that they had, without precedent, changed the requirements for impeachment so that the commission of an actual crime would no longer be necessary to satisfy the standard of high crimes and misdemeanors. It is not damage to the president, I fear. 
It is damage to the presidency, to the Congress, to the Constitution, the Bill of Rights that the Democrats do today by establishing dangerous precedents and principles that are antithetical to the rule of law and the fundamental architecture of our Constitution. While the Democrats railed on about something that had nothing to do with the seriousness of impeachment themselves. I come before you tonight as a descendant of slaves. Slaves who knew they would not make it, but dreamed and prayed that one day that I would make it. And so I asked my kids on our family group text what they thought at this moment. And they responded almost immediately. And they told me what they were feeling and what their friends were feeling. And they confirmed the worst. Their faith in our democracy is shaken. I never dreamed that I would be sitting here as a member of Congress. The only office I'd been elected to was school board in the small town where I live just outside of Philadelphia. When I was five, my dad was the police chief of Algona, Iowa. Representative Correa even addressed Americans during an impeachment debate in Spanish with zero repercussions. Me ha mandado a Washington para trabajar como, con todos, demócratas y republicanos, para mejorar las vidas de nuestras comunidades. As expected, the Democrats circled around in their echo chamber, distorting facts and lecturing the American people for having the insolence to disagree with their madness. And it is irresponsible to label a constitutional process a coup. It is the responsibility of this committee to follow the Constitution. However, the Democrats' high charade will end in total defeat as Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell may seek to acquit rather than simply dismiss the articles of impeachment. The Senate has two choices. It could go down the path of uh, calling witnesses and basically having another trial, or it could decide, and again, 51 members could make that decision, that They've heard enough. And once the impeachment smoke clears and is swallowed by the news cycle, the only context to remain as we enter the election year will be the ongoing investigations into this impeachment's nefarious origins. John Bound reporting.